Hello, this morning we're going to do some more of our English practices. And before we do our Philnet's uh, exam, uh, let me talk a little bit about our weather because as we can see, uh, we don't have the rain yet, but we do have the clouds. And uh, while it's a little bit uh, uh, brighter uh, than the previous days, I think, um, I'm thinking that it'll still, it'll still rain. So might as well uh, bring our umbrellas, bring our raincoats whenever we go outside, just in case um, the rain catches us outside. And uh, the next thing that I want to say is, uh, well, um, we do have some of the uh, some of the new videos, new gameplay videos from Nintendo Direct, uh, where they share certain games like uh, Super Mario RPG Remake, which I think is is a pretty uh, graphically impressive game, and also of course the sound, because we know that the sound is something that we can uh, something that can uh, catch our attention right away. Uh, and I'm thinking that if I already have the Super Famicom Mini and I do have the Super Mario RPG game there already, um, is there any other reason for me to buy the game aside from the improvements in the graphics and the sound? And I'm thinking, well, um, well, if there's another stuff that will be added there, then maybe that will cost me to uh, immediately pick it up and, and buy the game. And I do hope something like that would be added and and it will entice the other people already who have bought the Super Famicom Mini and, and have the Super Mario RPG. Okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, maybe, maybe, um, now I'm thinking, maybe a language uh, translation. I don't know. Um, because I do have the Super Famicom Mini and it's in Japanese um, and it doesn't yet have any of the other languages. Maybe. Maybe that will be the additional stuff. Uh, we'll see, okay? We'll see. Um, the other thing is Mario vs. DK, which I think is uh, something that combines puzzles puzzles and action. And uh, maybe those folks who are into these things too might be interested. Uh, we do get to see this part of the video where you have multiple players playing, but whenever I see this, I, I remember the, the previous Mario game, uh, I think it was in, in the Wii, where uh, you want to play multiple players on the same screen, and what happens is the people just fight each other. So we'll see if this part gets fixed in this, uh, this Mario game, Mario and Donkey Kong game. Um, the other thing is, uh, well, I'm do hoping for the Metal Gear Solid Virtual Reality Training, uh, which uh, I'm thinking is going to be part of the the collection that uh, will be released this October, um, because um, uh, well I do like the the part about the puzzles and the action. Um, if if you don't have a lot of time to play the whole story, uh, which I think can can be uh, quite long, over three hours if you don't know what you're doing, uh, and you just want to play maybe five minutes, ten minutes quick game then. I'm thinking the VR training is something that you can uh, you can do, and of course, if you have the Nintendo Switch uh, Portable or any of the Steam Deck Portable games that that uh, you can quickly uh, turn on, then this is something that you can play because right now I do have the uh, Final Fantasy VII and VIII remake on the Nintendo Switch, and what I do is well, if you want to sort of like play a few minutes of the game then you can turn it on and and you can play it instead of having to to wait for the uh, maybe uh, turn on the computer or find a place where you can um, sort of uh, sit I mean I mean of course if you have the the desktop then you can sit right in front of it but sometimes um, it takes a little bit more time I think <laughs> than if you already have your Nintendo switch portable that you can just push a button and it'll just quickly turn on, right? And I think the, the Final Fantasy VII, at least the parts that I've played, um, have a pretty good uh, pacing. So if if you think that you've gone a little bit far already, it'll give you a safe point. Then uh, if you think that you can move forward more, um, then you can go on. But it, it, it seems to have a good pacing that way, right? Um, so that part, I think it's... it's uh, 
it's good to have that because the the Final Fantasy VI on the Super Famicom Mini, um, if it didn't have the save state, um, then it would really be uh, uh, quite a long, a long game until you reach the the save point. Because there's a part there where it took me about two hours just looking around because I couldn't find the the uh, the exit <laughs> because I think you, if you don't know where to go you haven't played a game yet then it looks like it's really gonna take you about two hours to, to just just move around the I think it was a castle or or something like that that uh, uh, you have to uh, sort of uh, navigate yours well yourself uh, and um, I mean you're, you you have to navigate yourself with and uh, find the, the exit uh, so it's uh, it's something that uh, the Super Famicom Mini has the, the safe state so that you don't need to to spend too much time in front of the TV uh, if you if you uh, need to go somewhere then you can save state and and, and uh, play uh, another time okay now the other thing that we have here is the F099 uh, Battle Royale which is available for download already although here in the Philippines I think we don't have this part yet uh, because uh, I think it's a regional kind of thing and if you live here uh, there's no way for you to, to download the the games uh, uh, although I'm thinking uh, some people change their region and change their their country uh, so that they can download and pay for the for some of the games but um, right now uh, if you're kind of like me and we're still here in the this part of the Philippines I'm thinking they changed the country to region in the settings so if you uh, maybe are in the I think the Hong Kong region uh, it seems like I, I still can't download the thing so <laughs> maybe maybe I need to look into it some more okay uh, the other thing is Stray Children from Onion Games has noticeable drawing uh, uh, characters and backgrounds too and I think it's a technique that we can also uh, learn from and finally Paper Mario RPG which came out for the GameCube uh, and I think it looks quite impressive too. It's something that maybe uh, you'd also want to play um, because I do remember uh, Mario Story 64, which I've played on Nintendo 64. I, I think it's uh, it's a good game because um, whenever you're uh, um, sort of uh, fighting any of the bad guys, and uh, you don't need to wait for each turn to finish, but Whenever it's your turn to attack, you can also um, sort of time your attack so that you um, you don't just wait for the the action to to come, but you you are part of the the action. For example, if you want to jump onto a maybe a monster, then you can press the button multiple times so you can have multiple hits. And I think if you uh, want to defend yourself, you can also do so in that way. And of course, you have friends who can who can help you out. Um, and and then the story too. It teaches you certain things about how to survive certain certain um, problems like bullies and and well the solution was to just count, really to to have the the ability to to count <laughs> because uh, bullies tend to maybe uh, not do that part really well um, and. And that's what he's saying. That's the that's the solution to problem. But we'll see because right now I do know how to count and and, and still, and still uh, uh, the problem still exists. Uh, the other thing is I think once we reach the part there where uh, you have the flowers, I'm thinking that the the brightness part of the the flowers tended to be too much for me, and I was thinking, no, oh, wow, this game is kind of long, really long for the for the story. But after that part, it seems like we're much closer to the end um, so I think it's a part that uh, maybe they added uh, so that um, uh, those guys who may be playing too fast too quickly end up in that point and then think uh, maybe this game's too long but after you finish that part then you have this experience that wow it's really really quite quick after all so, so something like that 
Okay, so we go mo move on to the um, uh, Philnet's uh, sample exam, and we are now in number 63. For number 63, uh, what we do have are keywords again and saying something about implementing internal controls. Now, in this case, I think I chose the incorrect answer, uh, which was the letter D because I was thinking that separating team members um, seemed to be, uh, so I mean avoiding, avoiding separating team members seemed to be the correct answer for me. Turned out uh, the correct answer was letter C, avoiding um, the processing of purchasing and payment by the same person. And when I looked at the question again, we have here internal controls and um, because we're in the management uh, portion of the exam it seems like more of the audit and uh, auditing because if you have the same person doing several parts then you need a way for the system to check to verify if the computations are really what they say they are because if someone's buying and someone's paying uh, and only one person is doing these things, then he can just pretty much uh, change the values and no one will know. So um, in this case, if you want to have some kind of internal control, we add another guy to sort of do the audit. So you've done the computations, then let me see if they're actually correct or not. And I'm thinking that's why the correct answer here is letter C. So we need to look into more uh, the part of the, this part of the exam, which is management uh, and not with the IT part necessarily and also the, the words like internal controls. Okay, so now we go on to number 64. For this one, uh, what we have is uh, the word system audits and sometimes the exam questions, you can pick up certain ideas too. So if you can't find the answer for this one, you can move on quickly to the next one and maybe you have some kind of idea how to solve the previous previous questions. Now in this case, I did get the correct answer and it's not really uh, so difficult that uh, you'll, you'll uh, have a hard time answering because uh, when we're talking about audits, we want to know um, if something is correct or not and so we do some kind of evaluation. Now if we talk about implementation, it seems that it's more of like the developer side, not the management side. And it's like you're building a software or uh, writing some kind of computer program. But in this case, we're talking about audits, so uh, we're left with evaluation. So for the uh, column, the column B with the evaluation, um, we have either letter B or letter D. Now, how do you choose which one is which? We go to the the next uh, part of the the uh, the column or the table, which is column A, and it's saying that uh, so what does the system auditor do? Um, and if we look at it here, just like what we encountered in the previous question, the system auditor is an independent entity that uh, verifies, that evaluates the computations, for example, and in this case. And that's exactly what we have, the, the word independent. The other one has um, has here something about a thorough knowledge of the business operation. And uh, what we want is another guy who will look at the, the processes and see if there's something wrong or not. So the, in that case, the, the correct answer is letter D. And this one really is something that we can observe. Um, if you... Um, in particular, work with uh, large companies, they would require some kind of system audit, um, especially if, if we're dealing with millions, millions of pesos. We need some guy to, to verify if the computations are correct or not, instead of having only one person doing everything and just making some kind of computation there and, and uh, no one's... No one's able to check very well what exactly um, happened. Why is it uh, this amount? And I'm, I'm thinking that uh, 
Well, for smaller companies, maybe small, medium enterprises, they may not have um, the system audit yet, but we do have the uh, sort of like the BIR, the Bureau of Internal Revenues, to also uh, check from time to time. Uh, if anyone's not uh, paying your taxes, um, and for the larger companies, I'm thinking that um, we do get uh, these letters where they ask you, um, are you going to vote for this system auditor, this auditor to do the, the auditing for this company or not? So we do have that kind of um, system too, so that people who own a part of the company via stocks can vote, can also say something about uh, what we want to do as a, like a decision uh, for the, the future of the, the company. And then this part about system audits is something that is, uh, uh, that is there too for us to, to uh, decide on. Okay, uh, Who will be the entity that will do the audits? And like I said, if we're dealing with millions, then we got to have someone to do these things. And now I now remember about something about the, the smuggler terrorists who's doing the auditing um, besides the BIR maybe we should look into the, the guys who are auditing the uh, the vehicles the the smuggled vehicles smuggled stuff like that and if they're not doing any auditing at all how come they're giving away millions to buy these vehicles right um, just like that you just give the million millions of pesos to this guy um, and um, uh, why why would you give millions of pesos to this guy you trust him um, and remember uh, something about the PMP the project management professional how would uh, any of the companies the bigger companies who are dealing with millions trust you immediately give you money immediately if they don't know any kind of if you don't have any kind of certification, they don't know if you understand the language um, of uh, project management. And they look for people who have the certification before they uh, go and work with you because, um, yeah, we're dealing with millions, millions of uh, pesos. Okay, so we'll stop here for now and continue on with some of our uh, practices. Uh, and thank you for joining me this morning again too.